when other people tell their history, they come across as being patriotic. When other people talk about where they came from and who they are and what their history is, that seems, that's called patriotism. But when African Americans do it or when black people do it, they're labeled as being militant. They're called rebels. They're called Afrocentric. So that's the big difference. Our history, for some reason, it becomes offensive to people. So we have to stop being afraid to tell what our true history is. Studies will show that the dominant population here in America, especially, and in Europe, have wanted to claim everything for themselves. And so they have made up a lot of stories as they travel to places. And as we know, all of the places that the so-called European or the white explorers traveled, when they got there, black people were already there. Some kind of black people, or yellow people, or red people, or brown people. You, as a black man, are the root of all of the civilizations. Every body they've ever found, every tomb they've ever raided, whatever it was, they found uh, something symbolic of the black man, out of our features, your nose, your mouth, your head, the way we look, our hair, even braids, everything. The makeup of a human being's self-esteem, self-image, and self-concept is not only based upon one's family history, but it's also based upon one's racial history. So when you look at the self-esteem of black people and black children, you can rest assured that at least 50% of how high or how low it is, is contingent upon positive information that they know or don't know about who they have been in racial history. And over the last, I would say, thousand years, there has been an, a protracted uh, effort and an ongoing effort by those in power, the European powers especially, to make sure that what we have done as an indigenous or what we call autochthonous peoples, Earth's autochthonous peoples, uh, is erased irrevocably from the minds of all our people. Only a people who haven't learned how to respect themselves will let someone suggest or suggest themselves that they forget about the history. If you know yourself, there's no way that anybody could ever uh, do the things to you or would you do the things to you and yours that we find ourselves doing. So that, and in, in many ways, I don't really think it's hidden. It's there. It's just that they're not allowing us to understand. Brothers and sisters, kings and queens, God and goddesses, by audio I would share and I will be sharing information and the information basically comes from hidden colors the first one so if you don't hear me speaking it's because I want you to listen from the author of hidden colors the director of hidden colors Tariq Nasheed This is him. That is him. He is the, uh, the one who basically started his Hidden Color documentary and it was very successful. And I know a lot of you have not got his documentaries because it's one through four. But mainly, I like to share different information from the DVDs to open, help open your mind. Because a lot of you still choose to not to want to grasp for what's going on. Honestly, a lot of you do not want to grasp for what's going on. So let me get into part two on telling you now about the Moors and what the Moors is all about.
know it's the truth. As long as we know it's Pay the attention truth. to this next. Some people scared to deal with this right here. The nature of the European, of the white man. Where do he come from? And how was he created, according to your understanding? Well, in, 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 well, let's look at the work of Charles Finch, Francis Press Wilson, Dr. Richard King, um, Dr. Carol Barnes. But more than that, let's go to biology and let's go to science. And let's look at the human organism. And, and let's look at the role that the sun plays in the lives of the human organism. And let's look at an organism that is born in a very hot climate by Glossier's law. Glossier's law says for, for an entity to be able to survive as organic life, it has to be born in a warm and temperate zone. In this warm and temperate zone, the human family born in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania is born, it nurtures itself, it educates itself. It, it, it begins to eat better, when it eat better, it think better, when it think better, it eat better, but in its reproduction, it, it reproduces itself in such numbers that now it's too crowded. But more than that, let's go to biology and let's go to science. And let's look at the human organism. And, and let's look at the role that the sun plays in the lives of the human organism. And let's look at an organism that is born in a very hot climate by Glossier's law. Glossier's law says for, for an entity to be able to survive as organic life, it has to be born in a warm and temperate zone. In this warm and temperate zone, the human family born in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania is born, it nurtures itself, it educates itself. It, it, it begins to eat better, when it eat better, it think better, when it think better, it eat better, but in its reproduction, it, it reproduces itself in such numbers that now it's too crowded, so the human family starts to move. They move north, they move south, they move northwest, they move over into Eurasia, into Asia. Dr. Sheikh Diaw, Civilization of Barbarism Part 1, talks about the development of the, the African that moves out of Africa into Europe and then moves into north of the 51st parallel, which literally would cut Ireland in half, it cuts England in half, it goes across uh, Germany, Holland, straight across Asia. When you look at a map, there's a mountain that goes from one side to the other side that is almost like a, a polar cap that locks anyone in the 51st parallel in. There are four ice ages. There's the Gunsa Ice Age, Mindel, Riss, and Worm. We don't worry about the first three, according to Dr. Diaz. We only work, worry about the last one, because that's when the human family had moved and migrated into this part of the world. Ice Age hit. Temperatures dipped down into 800 degrees below zero, mm. sometimes 400 degrees below zero, and it lasts for generations, for thousands of years. There are generations of, of Africans that never saw the sun. It was only a mythological figure. It, 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 it was at its best what it looks like on a cloudy day. This African, being born in this area, goes into caves and puts on clothes because it's cold, just like we do right now. When it's summertime, in about three months, we're going to be out here and we're going to have tank top and shorts and everything else. Right now, we got all this on. The African finds himself in this cold region. It's extremely cold. In your skin, in your epidermis, you have five layers. You, you have what's called the stratum corneum, the stratum luciderm, the stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and the stratum basale. In the bottom two uh, layers, the basale and the spinosum, you have a biochemical known as 7-dehydrocholesterol. It sits in that epidermis, those parts of your epidermis. When the sun hits your skin, the light and heat energy is absorbed by this dark matter. It converts inactive D1, D2 into active D3. That is what is then shot throughout the entire organic body, and that's what begins to absorb calcium to bring the necessary things into existence for this human body to live. This dark complexion in the warm sunlight is natural suntan lotion. But in the cold, it stops the sunlight from getting in. So this human organism, black of skin, dark brown of skin, begins to depigment itself. Dr. Richard King says it takes 16 generations for a black person to become pale. So over all these years, this African now, in order to be able to derive the sunlight, begins to depigment itself. 
there, there is in your hair, in all, in all of your hair follicles, there's a sebaceous gland. In the sebaceous gland, there is an oil known as the sebum. The sebum is released. The little packets that are that explode in your skin, and it sends an oil up through your body. And in the scalp, in the heat, it protects. The, the head from the harmful rays of the sun, otherwise you get scalp cancer. In Australia, in Melanesia, but all across the globe, children can be brought out looking like many different types, because that DNA structure deep within can always produce what's called the archetype. The archetype is the African. The African produced every form of human being on the planet, but no other form of human being can produce an African. Now, I'm saying, it's a good explanation of what you're talking about. Yeah. See, see, my thing is, yeah. is, is to deal with science. Get out of the emotional thing. What, science is exact. And, 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 it can and you can follow it back into, you know, what, what will be actually called, when you're looking at something, you can follow it so that it makes sense. When you get emotional, you begin to bring elements into the discussion that become opinion, and then opinions can be proven wrong, and then normally when an opinion is proven wrong, then someone's going to say everything you say is wrong. But if you, say science, if you stay scientific, if, if you look at the depigmentation process, and just look at us, the complexion that we are right now is not what we're going to look like in August. And we're going to get dark. No matter how dark you are, you're going to get darker in the presence of the sun. As you begin to go into the colder climate, you're going to lose that suntan. Now imagine this African entity over thousands of years never having warmth of the sunlight. So it's a constant depigmentation process that is going to create what, what is called in science the Cro-Magnon. But that's not the Eurasian we see today. The Eurasian we see today is after these Eurasians left the northern climate, after the warm glaciation ended and they began to come back across to the southern lands, they came back not only with a depigmented skin, they came back with what's known as a calcified pineal gland. Calcified pineal gland, a healthy pineal gland looked like a grape. A calcified pineal gland looked like a raisin. Okay, a raisin is all of the liquids sucked out of the uh, the grape. That's why it's called sun dry. Okay, it came back with a warp mentality. That's still like the raisin. Yeah. And yes, and they come back with this concept, right? And so what they do is they forbid themselves to ever mate with the archetype. The first thing all of them should have done was found the biggest, blackest person to mate with in order to return back to the archetype. But what they did is they created xenophobic laws that forbid them. So they only mated with each other so that the Eurasian we know today is not a mutation. It is a mutation of a mutation. Okay, now let me ask you this. According to Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Blessings on that. Khaled Muhammad teaches that climate does not change the pigmentation of the skin. You see what I'm saying? So what I hear from you is saying that at one time the white man was black. He was an African yes. until he went up into the cold climates and his pigmentation started to change. Yes. There, so there, if that's true, yes. then that means the Honorable Elijah Muhammad story is incorrect. Well, I'd rather go back to what science shows. Okay. And I'd like to ask us to observe us when it's cold, look at our complexion. Mm -hmm. Observe us when it's very warm, look at the complexion. And if you find that you depigment yourself, it's not about someone's revelation, it's about science. And, and with due respect to all that have come before us, I'm sure the generations that follow me, like this young brother's generation, they'll get the story better than me. This is a process of becoming. We're, we're all trying to make this happen. Okay. I tell folk, don't believe a word I say. You don't have to because I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just trying to get you out the box to make you start thinking outside of what this system has forced you to think. Because if you if you live in the box and think in the box, all of your options have to come from your choices in the box. Once you step out the box, your choices, not even the sky is the limit. Because outside the box, you can see things that are not in the box. And I'm saying that, you know, it's, it's not about making you believe me. It's just about giving you information and asking you if you're interested in it, look at it a little closer. Give you that. Now, watching um, Booker T break the scientifically fact. Now, like I always said, you ain't got to listen to me. All I'm doing is sending and giving the message. That's it. Now, the things I showed you today, either you pick that up and you roll with it. 
Understand the faculties of what was told. If you want to know where this come from, this come from YouTube. The origin of the white people, the human race, is one. When you look at it theology, and you see that we constantly keep putting all our theories and where the white man come from and how did he or she become. Well, we have to become, use common sense and go scientifically. And the problem is a lot of people do not want to be scientific. They want to have their own notions and their own, their own ideas and say this is and that. I'm not saying the black white people is the bad people. No, white people are black people. Africans, the origin the origin of the planet, of the of the, the human beings or beings, or African people who migrated around the world. It's not a bad thing, y'all. You gotta get that to your head. To understand the concept and why things are the way they are, just do your research. I'm Jacques Lamara. This is a special. The sun rises. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Amun. Peace.